What's up everybody? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get set up with a Quadrant Cloud account. So the first thing you wanna do is go to quadrant.tech. And once you get there, click on this cloud button. Now, if you are technically inclined and wanna set up Quadrant locally, you can definitely do that using Docker. In fact, they've got that right here for you. You can go to resources, click on documentation, click on the quick start, and then it'll show you how to get set up with Quadrant locally. I'm gonna stick with using the cloud. You can sign up a few different ways with GitHub, with Google, or with your email address. But once you've signed in to the Quadrant account, you'll be on this screen here. So what you wanna do is go to clusters. And the next thing you wanna do is click on create cluster. Quadrant gives you a nice free tier. As you can see here, you get uh, one gigabyte for free and you don't need to enter a credit card or anything like that. So it's gonna be perfect for following along in this series and with the book. So go ahead and click create and you'll have a cluster set up. And now we have to go and create an API key. So we're gonna create an API key for that particular cluster hit OK. We've got an API key. Make sure you copy that API key because if, if you don't copy it, you're not going to have access to it again. Go back to clusters. We've got the cluster set up. Next, we need the cluster URL. So go ahead and copy that cluster URL. So the cluster URL you'll have access to anytime you want pretty much, but that API key, you need to copy that and keep that safe. Now that we're set up with a cluster, let's go ahead and interact with it programmatically. First thing you need to do though, before doing all that stuff, we've set up the cloud account. We need to set up our environment variables. I suggest just putting everything in a .env file. And once you've created a .env file, it's gonna be an empty .env like this. Go ahead and copy and paste your API key, your URL. We're gonna be using the OpenAI API throughout this series. So you'll need to create a OpenAI account and get the OpenAI API key. I'll show you how to do that in a later video, but just know that you are going to need to do that. So go ahead and copy and paste your information here. Once you've set up your environment variables in your .env file, you can go ahead and create the virtual environment in the description of the videos. There is a link to the GitHub repository that has these notebooks. So you can go ahead and just copy and paste from the notebook or clone the repository and follow along from there. We're going to create the Conda environment. We're going to activate that and then install these dependencies. Make sure that if you're following along with this video series that you use the exact same versions that I'm installing. If you're following along in the book, the versions that are in the book might be a little bit different. Either way, make sure you pin the versions. Once you do that, let's go ahead and just import OS, import the Quadrant client from the Quadrant client library, and then load our environment variables. Once we've loaded our environment variables, we can instantiate the Quadrant client just like this. We'll set a variable client equal to Quadrant client, passing the URL, so that's that cluster URL I had you copy and paste, as well as the API key. We're getting that from the environment. And when we do that, we've instantiated our client. Now let's see if we have any collections. So you'll notice here that we have a empty collection, which maps to what we see in the UI. If we open the dashboard here in the UI, you'll see that we do not have a collection. So what exactly is a collection? A collection in Quadrant is something that holds your points. And the points are the core kind of data structure you can think of that we're going to be working with in Quadrant. So a, a point is really defined by its vector. So some type of vector. This could be the, the vectors for a text. This could be vectors for image or whatever type of embedding it is that you have. And then also it's payload. And the payload is like the metadata for that particular point. So it's all the stuff that is not in the vector. So all points that go into your quadrant collection, these need to have the same dimensionality. So that vector length should be the same for all points that you have in your collection and you need to use the same similarity metric. We'll talk about similarity metrics later, but cosine similarity is an example of a similarity metric. So before you create your collections, there's some things that you need to think about. So first is the type of data that you're working with. What's going to be the vector size and the distance metric that you want to use and how you want to measure similarity. And then also the content of your payload, that metadata that you want to attach with each point. For this video, series, we're going to use text embedding three from OpenAI, which by default has a dimensionality of 3072. Uh, and we're going to use the cosine similarity metric. So what we need to do is create a configuration. We'll set the size of the vector to be, in this case, 3072, since that's the size of the vector for text embedding three. We'll use the cosine similarity as our distance metric. And now we can create a collection. Call the create collection method on the quadrant client. And we need to pass in the collection name. So in this case, uh, the collection name, 
going to use is just p underscore rag underscore series one. And then the configuration for that is going to be passed in as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we're going to go ahead and verify in the UI that we have a collection. So once we get to our collection, hit refresh, and you can see that we have a collection here. Now we've got some information that we could look at, some snapshots, and then as you see here, we can visualize stuff. We'll do all this a little bit later. So we see that we now have a cluster. So if you go here, you go to clusters, we got the cluster, open the dashboard, look at the collections, and we see that a collection exists here. You can also programmatically verify that. So on any client, you can just hit dot collections and it'll give you a list of the collections that you have. And now we're going to go ahead and just delete the collection just to show you how this is done. And the way you delete a collection is on the client called the delete collection method and then pass in the collection name that you want to delete. And you'll see here, once we do that, hit refresh, the collection is gone. It's no longer there. So let's go ahead and just shut down the client. That that's it for this video. So it shows you how to set up your Quadrant account and how to go ahead and create a cluster. What we're going to do in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to go from real world data to vectors and show you everything hands on. And we're going to actually put data into our Quadrant cluster. Make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Make sure you got the bell notifications hit so that you can be notified when the next video comes out. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.